Good morning, friends. Dustin here. You're watching the Life of Lynn channel. Thank you guys so much for tuning in today. Sorry for the wind noise. It's always a little breezy out here because flat. You know. Anyway, today we're talking about the solar system that I built for the shop. You guys have probably seen a couple episodes on it. If you haven't, subscribe to the channel. Go back and check out the older episodes where we built this little guy. This is a really small, relatively cheap setup. And we're going to see if it can power the house today. The whole homestead. Yep, all the way over there. So, what we have here is a bunch of 100 watt energy panels. I purchased 12 of these for about $98 a panel. So that's less than a dollar a watt. Pretty good deal. Not bad. I recommend you guys check them out. We're not sponsored by Renergy, but I've been using their stuff for years and they've been on several episodes. Been doing 200, 300, 400 watt setups on RVs and campers and tiny houses. And uh, recently we did this one here. We also have a really, really big setup coming soon. Uh, you guys will enjoy that. It's um, a massive solar system and it's the biggest one I've ever put together myself. So look forward to that. Subscribe, like the videos. Let's get on with it. You guys also know from past episodes that we put a wind turbine up. Yeah, that broke immediately and uh, had a 60 mile per hour gust come through here. And here's the clip from that. Yeah, so the blades survived that, but the next day they're doing this and it locked all the Loctite nuts right off of it and the blades just came off. So we're gonna shorten that pole down here and uh, that way the guy lines are closer to the weight because it was it was going like that so anyway that's uh kind of on hold for now until i can get up there because that was super sketchy to install that thing so our goal here today is we're going to shut off all the breakers from the mains and then open the breakers from the shop and that'll allow us to back feed from our inverter all the way over to the house we're gonna see if it works see if we can power the whole homestead there's a lot of things to power out here. There are some huge considerations. This is a small setup and I have some really big loads such as well pumps. Yeah, that's a major one. Uh, not too worried about an air conditioner in an emergency, but I think we're gonna see if it'll run it. Shop, I uh, still haven't gotten the, uh, everything wired in here, but lights work. Let's go check out what I got. Give you a quick explanation and then we're going to get right on into it. All right. Ultra cheap battery bank. These are 100 amp hour AGM batteries. I have eight of them. They're wired series parallel. So technically there's four banks. These two 12 volts makes 24. These two makes 24. Yeah, so on and so forth. Uh, so they're all put together. Excuse the wiring, I haven't prettied it up yet. This was just a uh, test of function and to make sure that it works. So our solar comes in through a Renan G charge controller here. It's a 60 amp guy, plenty good size for this. I upgraded from the one I originally put in here uh, just because I was maxing it out. Right now, we don't have direct sunlight, so we're only pulling 580 watts or so, 560, you know. But we do have 21 amps going into our 24 volt system. This is not the cheapest part of the setup, for sure. Weighs about 85 pounds. This is a very high efficiency Pearson wave inverter. It's gonna take our 24 volts from our battery bank and our solar. Change that over to, this is a split phase, guys. This is a 240 volt split phase power inverter. So this is going to be able to charge both hot lines and keep them in sync so we can power, you know, 240 volt loads with it. Pretty excited about this thing. Um, so far, testing it in the shop works pretty good. I can fire my air compressor up with, you know, 900 watts worth of LED lights already on in here. No issues whatsoever. We haven't come close to even maxing it out. Right now the shop is in off because that's the mains coming from the pole. You never want to double up your electricity because fire and explosions happen. So this is our 60 amp breaker coming into this panel from our power inverter and it's feeding all the shop circuits. Um, but when you shut it off at the pole out there, we can click that one on and that's going to back feed out that way.
Well, there's a lot of loads that I'm just gonna leave plugged in, um, but I'm killing the big ones. Washer and dryer are now done. Freezers will remain plugged in, same with the fridge upstairs. I got, you know, keep your meat in your house, you know? That way you got food. <laughs> I recommend it. Oh, it's gonna get real dark in here. What do you think, bud? You think it's gonna work? Okay, we got approval. So I'm gonna have the camera set up here in the shop. That's gonna be watching our load output on this guy. If you can even see it, hopefully. Okay, yeah. So we're at 1% right now. That's just running um, the little basic circuits in the shop. Lights are off out here. We're gonna go ahead. There should be a little bit of a load jump when we hit the mains because all the stuff in the house is still plugged in. Let's see what happens. 3%. 4%, it's climbing. All right, let's, we're gonna run over to the house, check our voltage, uh, make sure we're not having a huge line loss. This is a long distance for an inverter that size. Um, the voltage just isn't high enough really for running back and forth. But this camera's gonna keep an eye on our load percentage and an eye on things out here. Let's run to the house, turn on some circuits. This is an absolute unit, by the way. <laughs> Never ride with passengers, always wear your helmets. Little man's got the most important instrument of the day. That's our multimeter. Well, we have voltage here. <laughs> so our magic numbers on one of these phases is gonna be 120 volts. Let's see. Are these childproof? Oh, they are childproof. Got my multimeter through the childproof outlet finally. Look at that, 121.8. We are officially back feeding the house with our solar. Beautiful. Let's uh, let's put a couple loads on. What do you say? You want some lights back on? Okay. All right. LED halos. Firing away. Good deal. Okay. There's load number one. Load number two. Looking good. Bathroom lights? Roger. How about a bedroom fan? Yep. It's one of the biggest parts of this test is actually to see if the well pump will work. Uh, we have a pretty big pressure tank. I think it's like a 40 gallon. Um, so we have to run the water a little bit and wait for it to kick on. We should see the lights dim a little bit. Okay, it's been nine minutes. The well pump has to have kicked on by now. Okay, well I shut the water back off. I think the pumps come on and this thing is compensated flawlessly, which is great. Can we micro nuke? Let's uh, warm up this coffee here. Let's just do 22 seconds here. Start. Look at that. That's compensating voltage. What? Wow, that is awesome. What other loads do we got? Power is nice and clean. These are LED lights. Normally LED lights are really sensitive to electrical input. Um, so you'll see them like flutter sometimes. These ones staying on solid, look real nice. Yep. Pretty happy so far. I think we're gonna Go back out to the shop and see where our load rating is with a couple of lights and the appliances operating. And um, maybe turn on the big well for the garden and see what happens. How are we doing out here? 26.2 DC volts, still only at a 6% output load. Has this thing even been loaded yet? 
battery bank. We got 725 watts coming in now because the sun is getting closer to the panels as it rotates across the plane. That's a nice 26.4 amps. Oh, 20, yeah, 26.4 amps. Nice. Cables, not hot. Doesn't seem like it's had much of a load on it. Inverter, humming away. Doesn't seem hot. All right. I'm ready to hit the well pump and really test this thing out. So I'm gonna go turn on the big water in the garden and see what this thing spikes to. All right, here goes nothing. This is a one inch water line. Choked down to two, three quarters. Putting some water on some corn. Hey guys, comment down below. Is your garden doing awesome this year or horrible? Mine's pretty bad. Sweet corn and squash, but I had a lot of stuff not come up that's supposed to be in between all this. All right, we're pumping. Let's go look at the inverter again. Oh yeah, 46% load. We definitely got the well pump on right now. Power fans kicked on for the first time. But we're running it. We're running it. Solar is dumping everything it can into it right now. Not enough at 730 watts. See, we're losing battery condition pretty fast. I know this battery bank's gonna be the main issue. These batteries were used, but the price was absolutely right. Yeah, I know used batteries aren't gonna last very long, but these batteries had a pretty nice life. They spent pretty much their entire time just sitting there on a solar float charger, completely full for the last two years. So, yep, they're two years old, um, but they're gonna work for now. We are pumping more solar into it. This thing seems to be pretty stable. 24.6 volts coming in, 240 volts still going out. No alarms, nothing's too hot. And uh, she's cranking away, got the fan going now. Back in the house, still got power in here. We lost about one volt. Well pumps on right now, 121.5. Still pretty stable. Well, I'm pretty pleased. I think, let me try the air conditioner. I have a very inefficient 13 sear, 220 volt unit on this house. <sighs> Plus our blower for the uh, furnace and everything. He's gonna draw some amps firing up. So that's gonna be the next thing while I still got battery. And then we'll talk about uh, how much the system cost and my future upgrades. Okay, 123 volts plugged in in the bathroom here. That way I can see it from uh, this. Cause as soon as I hit the cool button on this, that compressor is firing up. And the old, not so efficient air conditioner. Ready, three, two, one. Or not. Okay, three, two, one. Oh, lights dimmed. Had a pretty serious voltage drop. It's recovering and AC is on. Cold air is coming out of the vents. Uh, we'll look at the shop footage and see what kind of load we're drawing right now. Probably pretty massive, but lights and everything are still on. Probably sucking a lot out of the batteries, so in a emergency situation, we would not be running the air conditioner. Sorry, it's a little, a little humid today, so the cameras are fogging up a little bit. So guys, I'm really impressed, because the shop is all hooked up on solar right now. You've got the compressor in this fridge here. We've got the compressor in the big fridge at the house, and I have one, two, three deep freezers plugged in. So with all those refrigeration units, that's a lot of compressors. Um, you'll see a little bit of an initial spike when they first turn on, but they balance out really well, uh, really quick and don't draw that much. New refrigeration units, look at where it's at. Oh, and the camera's dead, perfect timing. Good job, camera. So let's do an overview of this system. You guys already know the solar panels outside. I've got 12 100 watt units. Um, after the efficiency conversion, we're getting about 1100 watts into our battery bank in direct sun at about one o'clock in the afternoon. That's when I see the best. It obviously tapers off once you start getting later in the day. 
because I do not have panels that shift and move with the sun. Not really a big deal for me. That gap is going to be filled with my solar wind generator. That thing will be running all the time because the wind is always blowing. And while it doesn't produce a lot of amperage, it'll do it continuously overnight and even in storms and cloudy days. How much does it cost to power my entire house, homestead, well pumps, air conditioner, three deep freezers, two refrigerators, and the lights of my house? Not that much, I'll be honest with you guys. Solar panels, like I said, those were less than $100 a piece. There's 12 of them, 1200 bucks, right? So $1,200 in solar panels. Wiring, wiring was a little bit pricey. Um, some of this stuff down here, we're talking about high gauge copper, US made wire. Um, you want the best stuff there because that's where your fires start, guys. So I do have some nice stuff down here. Probably have about $300 in wires here. That's not including the three gauge wire that goes from the shop to the power pole. I didn't include that in this cost because I already had the shop wired for electricity. Um, but I think that was like a $1,400 spool uh, to get power out here, but not including that in the cost of the solar. So about $300 in wiring. Let's talk about our solar charge controller here. This is a great little unit. I paid about 280, 280 bucks for that. Been working flawlessly so far. Uh, our wind generator was about $400. That included our charge controller for that. Um, so we'll add that into the system even though it wasn't working today. Let's talk about this battery bank. Guys, this battery bank was super cheap. I bought them used, well, let's just say I traded for them. I had a friend that had some batteries. We did some bartering. Uh, he ended up with some other stuff. Um, so not a lot of money into that. Batteries is where, where you guys are gonna spend a lot of money. So if you can find a place uh, that's got slightly used batteries like this or some kind of discount, it's okay to start there in the future. I do plan on upgrading these maybe next year. Um, but it's really, it's cost prohibitive to buy, what, eight, eight lithium batteries right now? If you're looking at a 200 amp hour lithium iron smart battery, right? And you could do the same setup as this with eight of them and you double your bank. What are those, $1,400 a piece? 1,400 times eight? Um, yeah, that's a lot of money in batteries. So that's why I didn't do that. Guys, I recommend if you're just starting your setup, you can always expand your battery bank if you bought the right stuff, right? So we have a really nice charge controller that's gonna be able to handle a lot more solar panels. And we got kind of a crummy battery bank, but it already has good cabling on it, so this can be expanded. Next thing that I spent a lot of money on, this guy here. This is our power inverter. It's a 24 volt model. I recommend if you're doing real serious stuff, build a 48 volt battery bank and uh, go with the 48 volt model. This guy here is gonna work for our battery backup and run my day to day in the shop. This is a 6,000 watt split phase power inverter. That means it's got two legs. As you've seen already guys, this one is really nice. And of course, expandable. On top of the 6,000 watts continuous, this thing is capable of an 18,000 watt Pearson wave surge. So if you've got a big pump or a big compressor that kicks on, this thing will fire it right off, no problems. So don't plan on upgrading that. That seems to power the house just fine. We're just a little short in the battery bank right now. The power inverter itself paid about 1800 bucks for that. So where are we at so far? Future me editing, can you add all that together and put a total? Yeah, so that is our total for our system. For a complete power system, for battery backup, emergency use on your homestead. You could run that full time, but man, you would have to be really careful with how much power is in your battery banks. Overnights and stuff or cloudy days, you probably ain't gonna be watering your garden. Um, I do have a solar well pump that I'll be dropping into a second well. That is going to pump up into a cistern that we can use a small 12 volt pump to pump out of and uh, pretty much eliminate the huge power draw of our current 240 volt well pump. That's how much it costs to power 
your homestead with one of the cheapest solar systems on the market. And like I said, look for those discount batteries. You might be able to find a um, electric, uh, electric forklift place that has some batteries they want to get rid of. As long as they're still testing good, you might get one or two years out of them. And if you can get them for 50 bucks a pop, as opposed to $1,400, it's not a bad choice. Guys, I'm signing off today. Let me know down in the comments how I did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Hit the like button. Also, we need some help. We're trying to finish up some big projects like the Wheelie Bago, but we're waiting on parts. Uh, if you guys want to go help the channel directly, you can always go to buymeacoffee forward slash Life of Lind. I'll put a link in the description for that. Um, you know, buy me a coffee, a beer, a quart of oil, whatever you want. All that goes directly towards projects, nowhere else, no middleman. And thanks again for watching, guys. Really appreciate you. I got some cool stuff coming up. Uh, the month of August is going to be full of content. It's like a lot. I've recently made some purchases, and we're doing a lot of stuff here soon. So stick with me. Thanks again for watching. God bless you, and we'll see you next time.